Hey everyone, Dr. Mumbia here. So in this particular video, I will be explaining you cholesterol biosynthesis. Now the synthesis of cholesterol in the cytoplasm, how exactly this will go on? So it all begins with, uh, with acetyl-CoA molecule. There are different sources for acetyl-CoA in the cytoplasm. One of the main source for acetyl-CoA is the oxidation of glucose into pyruvate and pyruvate into acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria and we bring the acetyl-CoA from mitochondria into the cytoplasm in the form of citrate by citrate transporter. Now once, once acetyl-CoA is there in the cytoplasm, how exactly this is converted into cholesterol molecule? Note that cholesterol as I have shown in the figure here, Cholesterol is a complex molecule, it has got 27 carbon atoms. All the carbons present in cholesterol, it is all coming from a two carbon molecule that is acetyl-CoA. How exactly this happens? Now, in the cytoplasm, two acetyl-CoA molecules, so this is an acetyl-CoA molecule here. So, acetyl-CoA, two molecules of acetyl-CoA, they condense with one another. So, by a thiolase enzyme, so the enzyme name here is thiolase. So, thiolase enzyme condenses acetyl, two acetyl-CoA molecules into acetoacetyl-CoA. Now, this acetoacetyl-CoA molecule, it is going to condense with one more acetyl-CoA molecule. And the condensation, it will be done by an enzyme called HMG-CoA synthase. And this is going on in the cytoplasm. So HMG-CoA synthase condenses acetoacetyl-CoA with the acetyl-CoA molecule, release that CoA ash and will make a HMG-CoA. HMG-CoA, this is an HMG-CoA here, HMG-CoA. HMG-CoA, it is a 3-hydroxy-3-methyl-glutaryl-CoA. So 3-hydroxy-3-methyl-glutaryl-CoA is a HMG-CoA which is synthesized in the cytoplasm. And uh, now this HMG-CoA, it will undergo a reduction and uh, done by HMG-CoA reductase enzyme. HMG-CoA reductase enzyme, it is going to reduce HMG-CoA. So especially the keto group that is present here on the fifth carbon, it is reduced into alcohol group that is CH2OH. So this molecule that is made here after the reduction of HMG-CoA, a molecule we get it mevalonate. Mevalonate. Mevalonate is a product of HMG CoA reductase enzyme. And HMG CoA reductase is a rate limiting enzyme and it's a rate determining enzyme in cholesterol biosynthesis. I have a video on HMG CoA reductase enzyme regulation, that is the regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis. The link for that video is there in the description below. It is appearing right now in the upper right corner. And also it is there at the end of this video. So please take a look at that particular video because a regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis is a complex mechanism, variety of mechanisms are going on and you got to know that. Now, once you get mevalonate, see the mevalonate, it is a six carbon molecule. So that means we have two acetyl-CoA condensing with one another, make acetoacetyl-CoA, that will condense with one more acetyl-CoA molecule. So total we have three acetyl coa now two acetyl coa here and one more acetyl coa here. So three acetyl coa molecules, we got six carbons there. So five carbon here and then one more carbon here. So six carbon molecule is mevalonate. So in, in basically we have three acetyl coa there in this mevalonate. And the mevalonate will undergo a phosphorylation process and also there is a decarboxylation reaction. One of the carbon, di carbon dioxide is released there. And you get a 5 carbon molecule called isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Isopentanyl pyrophosphate, that's what is IPP, 5 carbon molecule. Now the isopentanyl pyrophosphate is going to condense with one more isopentanyl pyrophosphate to make a geranyl pyrophosphate. And geranyl pyrophosphate is a 10 carbon molecule. Now the geranyl pyrophosphate will condense with one more isopentanyl pyrophosphate and that will become furnacyl pyrophosphate which is a 15 carbon molecule, furnacyl pyrophosphate. So I'm going to talk about uh, furnacyl pyrophosphate at the end uh, once I finish this cholesterol biosynthesis because furnacyl pyrophosphate it plays a key role in uh, 
biosynthesis of some of the important biomolecules in our body. Now the furnacyl pyrophosphate, it is going to combine with one more furnacyl pyrophosphate. So condensation of two furnacyl pyrophosphates to make a 30 carbon squalene. This job is done by squalene synthase enzyme. And there is a reduction process. NADPH plus H plus is used and NADP is released there. Once the squalene is there, so squalene undergo one more reduction and make a 30 carbon lanosterol. And the 30 carbon lanosterol will release 3 carbons and become 27 carbon cholesterol molecules. So this is how you are going to synthesize 27 cholesterol, uh, 27 carbon containing cholesterol molecule starting from the acetyl CoA. So all the carbons that are present in this cholesterol, all 27 carbons present in a cholesterol molecule. So they are all coming from acetyl CoA molecules. So that means there is a condensation of acetyl CoAs, three acetyl CoAs to make mevalonate, and the mevalonate forms isopentanyl pyrophosphate, and this isopentanyl pyrophosphate they condense with one another, ultimately becoming cholesterol molecules. This is how cholesterol is synthesized in our cells, especially in the liver. Now once you say, once the liver synthesizes cholesterol, so this cholesterol it will be converted into cholesterol ester. Cholesterol is converted to cholesterol ester by addition of a fatty acid. A fatty acid is, it will be attached to the third carbon of cholesterol. I have shown you the structure of cholesterol here. Third carbon of cholesterol has got hydroxyl group and to that hydroxyl group a fatty acid will be attached and that becomes cholesterol ester. Majority of the cholesterol in the liver will be converted into cholesterol ester and that job it will be done by ACAT enzyme, acyl cholesterol acyl transferase. I have a video on fates of cholesterol in the liver so which includes ACAT enzyme function. Take a look at that particular video, the, the, the link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing at the end of this video. So, this is how we synthesize cholesterol in our cells and it is all coming from acetyl CoA molecules. Let me explain you what is the fate of furnacyl pyrophosphate in, in the, during the cholesterol biosynthesis. So, as you can see here, acetyl CoA molecules, they condense with one another making mevalonate and mevalonate will form isopentanyl pyrophosphate, geranyl pyrophosphate, furnacyl pyrophosphate and furnacyl pyrophosphate eventually going into cholesterol biosynthesis. So we have seen that particular thing now. So let me explain you what are the other fates of this furnacyl pyrophosphate that is uh, intermediate in the cholesterol biosynthesis. FPP there is furnacyl pyrophosphate. Now this furnacyl pyrophosphate it is not only going into cholesterol biosynthesis it is also used in the synthesis of coenzyme Q that is CoQ10, coenzyme Q10, which is also called as ubiquinone, ubiquinol or ubiquinone. Ubiquinol is a, a reduced form, ubiquinone is an oxidized form. So this coenzyme Q10 or ubiquinol, it is involved in electron transport chain. In fact, this is a, one of the mobile complex in electron transport chain and it is participating in the electron transport chain uh, be, be, are making a ATP synthesis. Now, if uh, all the tissues that contains, uh, all the tissues that need a lot of energy like uh, liver, like kidney and the brain, they express highest concentration of coenzyme Q10. That means they are going to divert this furnacyl pyrophosphate into coenzyme Q10 formation. Now, if, uh, uh, say, consider that the person is uh, uh, having hypercholesterolemia. And in a hypercholesterolemia, one of the treatment is they use a drug called statins. And the statins will inhibit HNG CoA reductase enzyme. So, when the HNG CoA reductase enzyme is inhibited, that leads to decrease in the synthesis of mevalonates, which will lead to decrease in the synthesis of cholesterol, and that's fine. But take a look at that. When you inhibit HNG CoA reductase, you are also decreasing furnacyl pyrophosphate, and that means you are going to decrease the concentration of coenzyme Q10. And uh, decreasing the coenzyme Q10 will decrease electron transport chain efficiency. So overall ATP synthesis can be decreased and this can be seen predominantly in the skeletal muscles specifically and patients who are on uh, statins, some of them, 
so they can have rhabdomyolysis breakdown of skeletal muscle myopathy and weakness and all that so myoglobinuria all these signs can be seen as a side effect of statins because furnace cell pyrophosphate is decreased that leads to decrease in coenzyme q10 so that is one of the fate of coen uh, furnace cell pyrophosphate is to go into coenzyme q10 so now the second fate of furnace cell pyrophosphate is to go into dolicol biosynthesis Dolicol is a uh, uh, polyprenol molecule. Dolicol it will be incorporated in the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum, and this dolicol it will participate in N-linked glycosylation process. So the N-linked glycoproteins are N-linked proteoglycans. So where the, the carbohydrate is attached to a protein molecule, so with the asparagine residue, and that kind of N-linked proteoglycan formation or N-linked uh, glycoprotein formation, N-glycosylation process, it will be using dolicol as a base or as a support over which you are building a carbohydrate unit, and later it will be transported to a protein molecule. So N-linked glycosylation process needs dolicol, and also furnace pyrophosphate. They are used in pranylation process. Protein pranylation. So, protein pranylation process uses furnacyl pyrophosphate and also it uses geranyl pyrophosphate. The geranyl, geranyl moiety or the furnacyl moiety will be attached to a protein molecule, especially N terminal cysteines will be attached with furnacyl pyrophosphate, which is called as furnacylation. It will be attached with geranyl, geranyl moiety, which is called as geranylation. So, we have a Enzymes, specific enzymes to do that. We have furnacyl transferases, geranyl, geranyl transferases. That particular attachment of FPP or uh, GPPs to a protein molecule, we call it as pranylation process. And this protein pranylation is, uh, it has been noted to participate in protein protein interaction, protein membrane interaction, and also the RAP, the RAP RAS proteins interaction also needs this furnacylation process. So we have uh, nowadays there are certain drugs which are under clinical trials where which are referred as furnacyl transferase inhibitors. So which are used as uh, antiparasitic drugs or uh, drugs used in progeria and some of the drugs used in uh, treatment of cancer. So that is what is a pranylation process where furnacyl pyrophosphate is uh, used in the pranylation process and helps in protein protein interaction or protein membrane interaction. These are some of the uses of furnacyl pyrophosphate which is an intermediate in the cholesterol biosynthesis. So I hope this video has helped you in understanding cholesterol biosynthesis. If you have any questions so kindly let me know in the comment section below and also make sure to click the subscription button there so that you get a regular updates whenever I upload a video. And if you like the video give thumbs up and uh, see you in my next video.